Welcome to the Biological Anthropology Lab. Today you will learn how to collect samples of various biological measures. These techniques include how to collect saliva, how to take various anthropometric measurements, how to take facial photos, how to capture a voice recording, how to use a three-dimensional camera, and how to obtain a DNA sample. Biological measures. Collecting unstimulated whole saliva samples by passive drool. Let's begin by learning how to collect saliva. In this portion of the video, we will review the protocol for collecting unstimulated whole saliva samples by passive drool. Two samples of saliva will be taken from each participant. The first will be collected at the beginning of the session and the second will be collected at the end. Before collecting the first sample, all prescription and over-the-counter medications should be documented in the sign-in book. Each participant should be instructed to rinse their mouth with a cup of distilled water. At this point, the participant should avoid eating or drinking anything for the remainder of the session. This should be done approximately 10 minutes prior to saliva collection. What you will need, latex safety gloves, plastic drinking straws, scissors, polypropylene cryovials of two milliliter capacity, labels. Before collecting saliva, first put on latex safety gloves. Next, cut plastic drinking straws into two inch, five centimeter pieces. Then, give each subject one straw piece and one cryovial. How to collect saliva. Record the time of day on the label. Instruct the participant to imagine eating their favorite food, allowing saliva to pool in their mouth. With their head tilted forward, the participant should drool down the straw and collect the saliva in the cryovial. Be aware that it is normal for the saliva to foam. Repeat this procedure as often as necessary until a sufficient sample is collected. One milliliter of saliva, excluding foam, is enough for most tests. If the participant's mouth is dry, instruct them to gently chew on the end of the straw. This will stimulate the production of saliva. Label the saliva sample, seal, and then place upright in a sample holder. Keep samples cold at four degrees Celsius after collection. The sample should be frozen between negative 20 degrees Celsius and negative 80 degrees Celsius as soon as possible. Remove latex gloves and discard before continuing the session. Anthropometric measures. How to measure height. Ask the participant to remove their socks and shoes. Instruct them to stand straight against the wall. Record height as marked on the measuring tape. A stadiometer can also be used to measure the participant's height. How to measure waist circumference. Align looping tailor's tape along the smallest part of the waist. Record waist circumference in centimeters. A simpler measuring tape can also be used for these measures. How to measure chest circumference. Align looping tailor's tape underneath the participant's shoulders. Record the participant's chest circumference in centimeters. How to measure bicep circumference. Align looping tailor's tape in the center of the participant's bicep muscle. Measure the circumference of the participant's bicep while flexed with maximum effort. The arm should be held at a 90 degree angle in a typical flexing position. Record the circumference in centimeters. Next, measure the circumference of the participant's bicep with the muscle relaxed. The arm should be held relaxed at the participant's side. Record the circumference in centimeters. Be sure to measure both arms with this procedure. How to measure weight and body fat percentage. Prior to taking the participant's weight, be sure to clean the scale's surface with a disposable disinfecting wipe. Instruct the participant to remove shoes and socks. Record the weight in kilograms and body fat percentage. Instruct the participant to put their socks and shoes back on. How to measure hand strength. Set the wire at the base of the dynamometer. Instruct the participant to hold the dynamometer at a 90 degree angle against the side of their body. Instruct the participant to squeeze the dynamometer as tightly as possible. It is important that the participant be encouraged to use all of their strength. View the measurement from the wire and record it. Be sure to measure hand strength in both hands using this procedure. How to take a facial photo. Log into the lab computer using your liberal arts account. Turn the camera on and be sure that the flash is on and raised. On this camera, this is achieved by pressing the button with the flash icon on the back of the camera. Open the camera software from the desktop. For this procedure, we will be using Olympus Studio 2. You are now ready to set the camera up for remote control. To do this, select Camera from the menu and select Camera Control. On the back of the camera, select the option Control by using the camera cursor, keys, and OK button. Open the folder called Participants Photos from the L drive or appropriate file folder. 
The settings should now load onto the camera. This should take around 15 seconds. You are now ready to take a picture. Instruct the participant to remove all earrings and facial jewelry. Place a headband on the participants who have hair which lies on their face. We will need to see the participant's entire face, hairline, and ears. This procedure applies to both men and women. Instruct the participant to sit in the chair provided with an upright posture and look into the camera with a neutral face expression. Count down backwards from three and press the AF shooting button at the count of two to take the picture. This is done to compensate for the delay between when you press the button and when the picture is taken. If the participant's expression is not neutral or you cannot entirely see their face, hairline, or ears, retake the picture. The file will automatically save in the folder Participants Photos. Rename the file immediately to the participant's ID number. If you have taken more than one photo, only rename one of the photos while disregarding the others. The camera should be turned off upon completion of this procedure. How to take a voice recording. Adjust the microphone height in accordance with the participant's height using the markers on the microphone stand. Instruct the participant to read the statement in the recording booth in a clear conversational voice. This is a good opportunity to ensure that you are getting a clear signal in the recording software. For this demonstration, we will be using a free scientific software for the analysis of speech known as Pratt. After logging into your liberal arts account, open the software from the Start menu. Select New from the pull-down menus at the top of the left screen. Then select Record Mono Sound. Be sure that the sampling frequency is set to 44,100 Hz. Be sure to enter the participant's ID number in the Name field. Failing to do so may cause the program to record over a previously saved file. Instruct the participant to stand at an appropriate distance from the microphone. Their mouth should almost touch but not rest against the wire guard. This effectively standardizes the distance of the participants from the microphone. Instruct the participant to begin reading from the beginning of the statement after you have counted to three. Press record before the participants begin reading. You may want to simply begin recording when your cue count reaches two. When the participant is done, save the recording by pressing save to list. Open the Pratt objects window. Highlight the recording by the participant's ID number on the list of the Pratt objects. Select Write from the pull-down menus at the top of the window. Select Write to Wave File and Save in the appropriate folder. You may now close the software. Collecting DNA. Before beginning DNA collection procedure, it is essential to review the feigning protocol posted in the lab. Knowing what to do in case a participant faints is the responsibility of all lab members participating in obtaining samples. How to collect a blood sample via finger stick. For this technique, we will be collecting DNA from the specially formulated Wattman FTA paper. This process is simple, safe, relatively painless, and provides a substantial amount of DNA in a stable form for analysis. What you will need. Latex gloves, alcohol swabs, self-contained lancet, four-circle Wattman FTA card with storage envelope, adhesive bandages. Before proceeding, be sure to put on latex safety gloves. These gloves should not be worn for the remainder of the session. Latex gloves should be discarded at the end of DNA sampling. Gather together the materials on a table and stand up near the table where all materials are easily at reach. If a participant is affected by the sight of blood, they should be instructed to sit down. Be aware that some participants may want to apply this procedure to themselves, while others will want you to do this procedure for them. Although both methods are acceptable, the actual pricking of the finger with the lancet should be performed by the experimenter. Either way, the experimenter must always be wearing gloves. Instruct the participant to carefully clean their middle finger with the alcohol swab. This is where the lancet will be applied. Hold the self-contained lancet between their middle finger, towards the top of the finger and slightly off to the side as demonstrated here, and thumb with the trigger button towards the thumb. Squeeze the lancet. The button will trigger and the lancet tip pokes out into the skin and then quickly retracts. After one use, the lancet cannot be set off again. Discard the lancet. Once the participant's finger has been pricked, instruct the participant to begin milking the blood. To do this, take the other hand and pull forward towards the tip of the pricked finger. This should be done slowly as the blood may come out fast. Squeezing the tip of the finger may also achieve the desired effect. As blood drops from the tip, the pricked finger should be dabbed onto the FTA paper inside one of the circles. The participant should repeat the milking action to bring blood forward into the finger and dab it onto the paper. Instruct the participant to fill as much of each of the circles as possible. It is best for all circles to be completely filled in. 
After filling in all four circles, instruct the participant to clean the pricked finger with another alcohol swab to sterilize the finger. Next, apply an adhesive bandage. The blood flow should be very slow by now. If the participant is still bleeding, instruct them to hold their hand in the air and apply pressure to the finger stick site. Once done, allow the paper to air dry for approximately five minutes and place in a storage envelope. Make sure the participant's ID number is on both the bottom section of the filter paper and on the outside of the storage envelope. 3D photo instructions. Open the 3D MD software. Click on the modular system icon to open program. Calibrating the camera. It is helpful to have two people for calibration. Click on the icon that looks like the calibration board. Follow the directions in the calibration window. Hold the board so that the T is upside down. Tilt the board at a 45 degree angle away from the camera. Center the T in both camera windows by moving the board. Press Acquire Image Set. Repeat the same procedure with the board tilted towards the camera at a 45 degree angle. Note, if the camera fails to calibrate, you will need to repeat the calibration procedure from the beginning. Make sure that the board is properly aligned. Taking photos. Make sure that the internal flash box is checked. Click Input New Subject Icon, the icon that looks like a blank sheet of paper. Enter the subject's participant ID number as the subject's name. Move the subject until their face is centered in both camera windows. Ask the subject to tilt his or her chin up slightly. Ask the subject not to smile. Click the green button to capture. Take a second photo with the subject smiling. Note, make sure that for each new subject, a new folder is created by clicking the Input New Subject icon. Previewing photos. 3D View icon allows you to preview the photo. To save time, check the first photo, but not the second. Make sure that the subject's entire face has been captured. Full face, including the forehead, bottom of the ear, top of the ear, have subject pull hair back if possible, under the chin if possible. Editing photos. To edit a photo, click on the Edit Current Subject icon, the paper with lines. If you want to edit a previous subject, you will have to do this from the Data folder. Storing photos. Photos are stored by their subject ID numbers within the data folder on the desktop. Move photos onto an external hard drive and copy the files to the backup folder before deleting them from the data folder. Note, each photo is approximately 25 megabytes. Other notes, the camera should be connected to the computer before the computer is turned on. Small green lights inside the camera indicate that the camera is on. Make sure that the cameras are recalibrated any time they have been moved. Preview the first photo taken to check the settings. Check the date and time settings before you begin. Thank you for watching this training video. We hope that you will now be able to take effective and consistent samples from our research participants.